Well, good afternoon. Um, as Sergio said, my name is Helen Garita. I'm going to present our project of monitoring of the structural condition of bridges based on acceleration measurements. Well, I'm going to start talking about general concepts. Um, later, I'm going to, to talk about the project development, um, examples of, of application on national bridges. And at the end, we have, if we have time, we're going to have commentaries and questions. Well, what is the main purpose of monitoring? So here in Costa Rica, we are used to, to use Waze app when we need to go to some place. I think you in your country are used to use Weather Channel in order to plan your activities. So we use this kind of applications in order to take decisions and to control a system. Uh, for a formal definition, monitoring is to watch a situation carefully for a period of time in order to discover something about it. Well, this diff different industries have implemented uh, system monitoring, like the automotive industry. Our cars are full of sensors that tell us if we need gas or if there is an open door. Also, the computation industry, aerospace, naval, and recently, the civil infrastructure uh, industry. So in the context of bridge management, uh, the monitoring is a tool for decision making that complements the visual inspection. Uh, can be used to define the state of condition of bridges, uh, and then identify the existence and location of damages for a possible intervention uh, the, to the evaluation and quantification of the damages and tracking of the evolution of the damages. So two important concepts are damage and, uh, and state. Damage is changes to the material are or and or geometric properties of a system, including changes in the boundary conditions and in the system connectivity, which adversely affect the system performance. And in order to identify damage, we need to, it is necessary to compare two different states. The initial, the first state is the initial state, also called the ideal, uh, the state without damage or the healthy one. And the second is the state that could have a change. When according to Ritter, there are four detection, uh, detect, damage, damage detection levels. And uh, level one is detection. So the, the question is, is the structure damaged? Uh, level two is location. So where is the area with damage? Level three is quantification. What is the severity of the damage? And level four, prediction. What is the remaining life of the structure of what is the behavior in the occurrence of the possible event? So in order to detect damage, there are local and global methods. Global methods are based on parameters that allow to detect damages and their location in, in a general level. The result is simple. There is or there is not damage, and where is the damage? Um, they allow to observe the evolution of the damage over time. Local methods give detailed information of a specific section of a bridge, in our case. Uh, they are not appropriate for a general tracking of the structure and its effect on the overall behavior of the system. So an important thing in this topic is the selection of the parameter for identification of the damage. The parameter has to be sensible of the damage in the different locations where the sensors are. Uh, it has to have a special, a special information that allows the localization of the damage. And it has to help as an input for, or, uh, to identify, identify, calibrate, or create physical or math met models of the monitor phenomenon. Well, in order to define structural health monitoring, I'm going to present analogy, an analogy between hum human beings and bridges. In the first state of life, in the gestation and birth, uh, the, we human beings need fet uh, fetal monitoring and to open a clinical history. Well, in the case of bridges, we need 
to open a clinical history too, in order to have proofs of the reception of work. During life, we need preventive medical exams, and Bridges needs routine inspections. Um, in illness, uh, we need specific exams, and Bridges needs detailed inspection of an area. Um, in severe illness or emergency, we need continuous monitoring as well as bridges. So I'm going to talk about the project uh, development. The project, uh, the idea of the project uh, started in 2012. Um, in the next years, years a research, research proposal was presented. Um, we purchased the equipment and made a validation of the, uh, of the laboratory validation. Um, in 2015, the first uh, bridge was monitored. And the general objective of our project is to develop a portable system of monitoring and evaluation of bridges uh, that allow to complement the inspections on the damage detection and to quantify the state of deterioration. So use, we use structural health monitoring based on vibration, also called operational model analysis because we are used vibrations provoked by traffic. Um, we extract the dynamic global parameters of the structure, uh, the frequency of vibration, damping, uh, model shapes. Um, the premise of the structural health monitoring is that any variation in the mechanic properties of the structure induce changes in the dynamic parameters that I mentioned before. These changes can be changes in mass or changes in stiffness, like gelding, cracking, deterioration of the material, uh, loss of connectivity, um, etc. It is possible to identify, da to identify damage by detecting uh, changes in the dynamic parameters periodically or after an, or after an extraordinary event. Uh, here I want to say that in our context, uh, a permanent monitoring is not uh, the ideal. It's only, it's, uh, we said that it is only possible if the, if the, if the bridge has a severe illness. So we use system identification. This image here represents a dynamic systems, there are disturbances, the structural system, in our case the bridge, and the response parameters that can be displacements, velocities, or accelerations. So in the case of civil structures as bridges, it is difficult to know the inputs. Uh, so a method uh, of identification of system knowing only the outputs must be used. Um, the stochastic hypothesis states that inputs will be considered as, as Gaussian white noise. So this is the system that we have on no disturbances, on no dynamic parameters, and it is only possible to know the responses in the places where the sensors are. Um, well, we use a method of identification of systems called stochastic subspace identification, SSI, uh, this is a method of lineal identification in the time domain, has been used widely and successfully in the analysis of civil engineer structures. Um, for this project, we use covariance driven stochastic subspace identification. We also use the frequency domain decomposition method as a complement. Um, this is a method of signal processing and is in the frequency domain. It uh, we use this method to, in order to that determine, determination of the system order. So the, the main equations, the main uh, of the SSI are those, are this, the state equation and the observation equation. I'm not going to, to deep in this. Um, here um, I present the relation between discrete time and continuous time. At the end, we have um, the, the model that is shown in the first box. Uh, the next boxes are the procedure, the mathematical procedure in order to obtain the dynamic properties. We have, we use the Hankel matrix, the toplitz matrix, we use singular value decomposition, and at the end, we obtain the eigen, 
eigenvalues. Okay. Um, so now, some examples of application of this system. Um, the first one is in Lisbon, Portugal. Uh, you can see the, the bridge, the sensor distribution, and the, res um, the, um, um, the results of the first vertical bending mode. And this is a, a bridge too in Hong Kong. Um, you can see also the distribution, sensor distribution and the shape form, one shape form. And this is the Canton Tower in China. The results here are from the thesis of Professor Li Cheng. Okay, so this is our data acquisition system. We, we use 32 sensors that are connected by cables to, uh, to the data acquisition unit. This is the data acquisition unit. The data, data acquisition unit sends the, the signal via Wi-Fi to another data acquisition unit that is connected to the computer. We also have two suitcases for static measurements, like temperature. Um, this is a scheme of uh, the equipment. You can see the sensors, the data acquisition units, and here the computer. <laughs> Um, the sensors are in a protective case. Um, import, uh, we could cover a maximum length of 100 meters. If the bridge is longer than that, we have to do different configurations. Um, and the validation of the synchronization system. system uh, the first test was in 2014 in a bridge here in this campus. Uh, these are, um, this, this was the, the first um, data that we obtained. Uh, as you can see, the data was not synchronized. So we tried with three-story building model. Here you can see the sensors they are, are aligned and in the same di direction. Each sensor is connected to a different data acquisition unit. Um, here are the results. You can see at the end, we obtained the uh, synchronization of the four data acquisition units. Okay, uh, so we made a test in Parque La Paz, pedestrian bridge, and these are the results. Um, the first uh, image is the stabilization, stabilization diagram. Each of any vertical line represents a stable mode and um, the first below are the argon diagrams for each mode. Um, okay. These are uh, more, more results of, uh, of the, the results, the dynamic parameters. Uh, here is the frequency and the damping at the shape forms. Well, I'm, I'm, now I'm going to talk about examples of application on, on national bridges. I'm going to, um, to focus on the Salitral Bridge, which is this one. Okay. Here you can see the, the data acquisition units and the sensors and the cables. And this is the first configuration. Um, we have to, to do two configurations in this case. Um, these, are, these are the experimental results. You can see we obtained six uh, modes in this case, and these are the stabilization diagram and the argon diagram for the first vertical bending mode. After this, we, opt and we did an analytical model. This is the preliminary analytical model. And um, this is the, uh, the, you can see the analytical and experimental uh, frequency values and the percentages of difference, as you see, are, are high. And the terbendical mode didn't appear in the analytical model. So uh, we did modifications to the model. Um, we uh, made hypothetical cases. Uh, the one that show us um, more is a model with two peers model as a spring. When, the, when we did that, uh, the third ventricle mode appears, so 
uh, we realized that we have to model the peers of the bridge. Um, so the final model is this one. Um, a reduction in the stiffness and modeling in dam of damages in the deck. And this is the, this is the final model. And the analytical results, as you see, here is the third ventricle bone that uh, represents the interaction between peer substructure. Um, these are the results, the percentages of difference, as you see, are lower than, than the ones that I present before. And the model uh, assurance criteria. Uh, values that is the relationship between mode shapes and the experimental analytical mode shapes. So uh, MAC of uh, almost one is a close relationship between formal modes. Um, this is the, the lower value of MAC that we obtain. So for this bridge, we also obtain experimental and analytical results for long, uh, longitudinal and transverse modes. Um, well, as a summary of work, from 2015 to 2018, we have monitoring uh, 15 bridges uh, of different materials um, in different states, four of them new bridges, one rehabilitated, and the other one were, were had different ages, like 20 years or something. We have um, four undergraduate theses were done, three technical, report, uh, three technical reports, eight reports for the administration, and we have participated in different national conferences. Now I'm going to show quickly some, some other results for the other bridges and steel bridges. Well, the Ciruelas Bridge, uh, in this case, we obtain experimental and analytical uh, re results. You can see here is a composite uh, steel bridge, uh, steel girder bridge, and the, you can see the frequency uh, the, of the first bending mode is 2.36 hertz. This is another steel bridge, uh, is the same type of bridge um, with the same length of maximum span. Um, in this case, we obtain a lower value of frequency. Um, these are uh, two parallel, parallel new bridges. Um, you can see the, the value of frequencies. Um, in this case, the length of the maximum span is lower than the ones before. Um, it's also a composite steel girder bridge. Um, this one is a cable stay bridge. Uh, this was a thesis, undergraduate thesis. Um, you can see the, the, the value of the frequency value is 0 0.47 almost hertz. Um, in the case of concrete bridges, um, this is the, the one with the higher value of of frequency, 2.13 hertz, is a, has a length of 56 meters. So, okay, in, the, uh, in this case, we only obtain experimental results, and the value of fre uh, frequency is 1.42, and is a pre-stress country box girder bridge. Uh, Grande River, Grande Bridge, uh, we obtain experimental and analytical results. Um, in this case, the value of frequency is 1.26 hertz, and also is a pre-stressed concrete box girder. Uh, Conception bridge, uh, the, low, uh, the value of fr frequency is lower in this case. Uh, and this is the last one, um, the Virilla bridge. Um, in this case, we have obtained um, the uh, results in different years, in 2015, 2017, 2018, and 2019 too, but it's not here. 
Uh, if you see um, in almost all the, the nodes, the value of frequency is decreasing. And here is the results for the FDD method. Um, the green line represents the uh, frequency spectrum of 2015. Um, the other is the 2017, 2018, 2019. Um, if you see, the value of frequencies are going down, going are decreasing um, is uh, is better is can be can be easy in this place as, as a better okay so findings so far um, the model the models developed during the design are conservative uh, the identification of systems using many observation nodes allow to calibrate and validate the analytical model a calibrated analytical model that reflects the behavior of the structure allows to eliminate inaccuracies in different analyses. And generally, in the practice, small models based in plants are developed, and in some cases, uh, material t tests are done. So uh, I don't want to end without saying thank you to you all to come here. This was the first. Uh, time of Professor Christensen here, and I want to say, Sergio, to thank you for, for your effort and for your work. So, 